In this video, we're going to take a look at a solid loft, a surface loft, a form loft, and cases where you have to use either a surface or a form loft in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the differences in the geometry between a solid loft, a surface loft, and a form loft. We're also gonna take a look at special cases where you must use a surface loft or a form loft instead of a solid. Now, I know we've talked about lofts and patches already in this series, but I think it's important that we at least cover a couple of examples before we dive deeper into creating things like curves and 3Ds to drive our surfaces. So the first thing, if you wanna follow along, you can go to the description of the video and download this data set. What we're gonna be doing is starting by taking a look at sketch one and sketch two and generating a solid loft. When we look at creating a solid loft, we need to have 2D closed profiles. Now, both of those are important because 2D means that the profiles are on either a plane or a planar face. The closed profiles are required in order for us to have a solid. I'm gonna change this to a direction for each of these, leaving the takeoff weight at one, and I'm gonna say okay. So this generates a solid body using those profiles. This means that I can do things like shell it out and make it thin walled. I'm gonna hide it for now, navigate to my surface tools, and I'm gonna use a surface loft. Using the same exact inputs, I'm gonna change these to direction and use the takeoff weight of one. I'm gonna say okay. Now theoretically, this should be identical to the solid body we just created. Now I have found that there are slight differences or nuances that happen when you generate a solid versus a surface form, even using the same inputs. In most cases, it is not going to matter. In some extreme cases, you might find that the results are going to be better with one over the other. Now, in this case, they're gonna be relatively similar, but we will talk about how we can identify those problems. And next, we wanna create a form. Go to Create Loft, and we wanna create a form between these profiles. Now, I found that the form loft gives us the best output or the best result. However, there is a potential problem here. The potential problem is the fact that the loft is going to not necessarily match the profile exactly. In this instance, we can see there's a gap between our loft and between our profile. This means that we need to increase the number of faces until we have a resolution that is either matching as close as we can or acceptable for our results. We can see here at 14 faces, it's relatively close. It looks like it matches pretty well everywhere, but right here. Now, if we increase this to 15, you might think that would just get better, but you can see it's simply moving that gap around. 16, you can see the gap is just slightly moving around. When we get to 19, it's relatively close, and 20 looks pretty good. So in this instance, I'm gonna use 20 face divisions in order to get that. Now, with a form loft, you'll notice that once I hit OK, I can't go back and make any changes to the loft itself. Once we create a form body, this is a direct or a destructive environment. We make changes directly on the loft by doing things like deleting edges. But if you wanna recreate the loft, we unfortunately have to undo, go back to create and select create loft. So in this case, I'm gonna select the profiles again, increase the face count to 20 and change the direction in this case, we're gonna say that the direction has a takeoff weight of one. For the faces vertically, this is another area that we need to consider, especially if we are talking about driving this curvature. Eight is probably fine. If we change this to four, you can see that the curvature is relatively close. If we change it to two, this puts one edge directly in the middle. This means that we're driving the shape based on that. If we put one, you can see that it still looks like the appropriate shape. However, those are going to present potential problems downstream. To simplify this, I'm gonna use a face division of two in the length direction and 20 in the width and say, okay, then we're gonna finish our form. Now I wanna move these. So I'm gonna use M on the keyboard and simply move this down, say, okay. I'm gonna take my surface body and I'm gonna move this one up, say, okay. And then we wanna bring back the solid and hide our sketches. Now at this point, visually they look very similar. There's not much of a difference that we can tell just looking at them. Without rotating this around and knowing that the middle one is the solid, you likely wouldn't be able to tell the difference between any of these just by looking at them on the screen. 
However, there are some slight differences. Some of those differences are due to the fact that we had to decide on the number of divisions for our form surface, and some are going to be just based on the way the geometry was created. So we're going to use our curvature map analysis. We're going to select each of these. And as we look at this just visually on the screen with the same exact settings, we can see that there is a difference in the form body versus the solid and the surface. If we drag the scale up or down and take a look at some of the changes, once again, we can see that the solid and the surface look very similar. There are some very slight differences, but they are extremely close together. And we can see that the form body, because we had to make some design decisions on those edges, does give us a different result. We can see that the location of the inflection point is on the edge for the solid and the surface, but it's actually shifted over a bit when we're talking about the form. Once again, this is likely due to the location of those edges and the conversion process to make this a surface. The things that we wanna focus on are going to be the way in which our curvature travels across these edges. We can change to bands to get a little bit better idea, but some of the problems that we look for when we're looking at geometry like this is what the color does as it crosses that edge. And this is gonna be really hard to see on the video because it's this lighter color here, but we can see that there is a very clear jump or step as we get close to that edge. We can see it a bit better here in the greens and yellows. As we look at the solids and the surfaces, we could see the same thing, but in this case, it's actually not nearly as bad. If we move over to a principal maximum, this is going to give us the radius of curvature. Once again, we should see a slight difference between the form and between the solid and the surface. As we rotate this around, we can see there's a little bit of a pocket here, and this is likely because the form body probably had an edge here and probably had an edge here. As we rotate around, once again, we can see that there's a little bit of a spike here, and we can have a pretty good idea that there was likely an edge there that was controlling the curvature. As we drag this up, we'll start to see more and more edges appear. Now, once again, we need to think about the end goal for this design. Does this, in fact, matter? Is this result going to have any effect on the part that we're designing? Well, it really depends on the manufacturing method. If you're producing a part that has a high gloss finish and is likely injection molded, probably going to be the worst case scenario if you have issues in your curvature. However, if you're 3D printing something or if you're CNC machining something, you're likely going to have a lot of other surface imperfections. In the case of CNC machining something like this, you're likely going to see a lot of facets on the faces because the CNC software, in this case, Fusion 360, is going to have to link those different sections together with straight lines. This means if it turns into an injection mold, it's likely going to be polished before it's used. But the CNC part is likely not going to see any of these surface imperfections. So what does that mean downstream? What does that mean for you as a designer? Which tool should you use for your parts? Well, in most cases, the solid and the surface loft are gonna produce identical or very close to identical results. The form surface is going to allow you to have a little bit more control over the loft if you don't spend the time to define all of the various things like the guide curves or the different ways in which you can control that loft. So if you have a rough idea of what you want your shape to look like, the profiles, but you want some control over it, likely the form option is going to be a good one. But what is the special case or special cases where you have to use a surface or a form? Well, in this case, we're gonna show sketch one and the 3D curve sketch. Whenever you have a non-planar profile, you have to use either a surface or a form loft. A solid loft is not going to allow you to use anything that is non-planar as a profile. And that's because it is patching the ends of those faces to create that solid body. So in the case like this, if we were to create a loft, we could go between our 2D profile and a 3D profile. We can still drive the direction and we can create a complex edge or a shape with a complex edge by using this tool. It's gonna to be exactly the same using the form tools However, a solid won't work in this case because it's not able to accurately patch the end of that geometry. Now, is that the only case where you would need to use a surface or a form? 
Well, no, if you happen to be creating a loft that isn't a closed profile, that automatically will make it so that a solid will not be a good option. You have to use a surface or a form if you wanna have an open profile. So those are gonna be the differences between creating a solid loft, a surface loft, or a form loft. Now, in most cases, if I'm working in surfacing tools, I'll use a surface loft. If I'm working in form tools, I use a form loft. I generally don't mix and match the surface and the form tools, but that's not to say that you can't. The only thing that you should consider is if you are creating a form loft instead of a surface loft, you need to really think about the fact that your form loft is not going to exactly match your profile like your solid or your surface will. So for example, if we create this 3D loft here and we drive the direction based on the curve, we didn't add any additional edges. So you can see here that we're not matching that profile. So if we finish, you can see first it's giving us a self-intersection warning, which means that we do need to add a couple more profiles. And it could potentially mean that we are not able to generate it based on these curves without increasing this to a higher number. If I try to finish the form now, once again, you can see that we are getting this T-spline conversion fail because it self-intersects. What this means is that there is some issue with the intersection of the form, and you can see that it's highlighting this red edge. This red edge is problematic for this, but it still does let us generate this 3D shape. One thing that we can do is we can select that edge and we can delete it in the form body. And then we can blend those two together using a tool like Bridge. So we use this as our one side and this as our other. And I'm gonna just put one face in between and allow it to sort of patch that geometry. So once again, there are potential issues that we run into with using things like forms. But the main takeaway from this is the fact that the surface is going to have a different boundary than the form is because we have to decide on the number of edges or divisions. So this means if you decide to use a form, then anything that you build off of it downstream should use this edge and not the sketch that you used for your loft. We can talk about those more in depth as we build more complex surfaces, but for right now, the important takeaway is that solids and surface lofts generally are gonna give you the same result, assuming that you're using planar inputs. If you have a open edge or if you have a non-planar edge for your profile, then you'll have to use either a surface or a form. The surface and form will give you different results based on the form body definition. If you increase the number of edges, you are potentially going to get closer to the same result. However, you could be introducing issues in the surface itself. So there are ways to get around those. Again, this is not a, a form series. This is going to be a surfacing series. So we're not gonna go down that path but it is important that we understand what tools we have available because our form tools do generate surfaces for us. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.